um, he had something that had come up. Okay, so let's hear from the candidates from District 7. And if you'll come up here, Christina Sonsire and uh, Neil Milliken.
cut grass in the park. In college, I uh, laid blacktop and plowed snow. Um, after I finished school, I came home, uh, bought a home in the town, raised a family in the town, started my dental practice uh, in West Elmira. So I had the, uh, the privilege of paying town taxes twice, <laughs> which I think uh, should allow me two votes. <laughs> involved in uh, community service work, uh, mostly in the education field for uh, 30 years. Uh, most notably and most recently, I've been on the uh, Board of Trustees of Corning Community College for, for a number of years. I'm the immediate past chair of the board uh, during, my, uh, during my four years as chair. We uh, underwent a, a comprehensive reorganization of the college. $44 million dollar, uh, capital campaign to transform the Spencer Hill campus and we opened our first uh, student residence hall. Uh, I've been on the legislature six years. Uh, I don't think I can count my father's uh, experience there. Um, up to six years and um, would very much like to continue. Uh, one thing I would say uh, in the campaign season, one of the first casualties is clarity. Uh, it's, it's difficult to sift through all of the information that we're inundated with. So a suggestion that I would make to you is, is look at the record of, of recent county government. Uh, I am very proud of, of what we've done, what we're doing. Uh, the transformation is, is evident. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the old saying applies here, which is the best predictor future performance is, is your past records, and I think that, uh, that holds true here. So, thanks very much. Okay, so do we have some questions from the audience? Yes, um, if you want to pop up and use the microphone. My name is Rick Paul. I grew up in this area. Um, I have a kind of business in this area. I've done it for 18 years. I've worked in the city. I've done property management. My question, and you're talking about poverty, we're talking about high crime. My question is about all you candidates. All you candidates. What are you going to do to change this? What are you going to do to bring personal responsibility from the county execs? all the way down to the villages, all this stuff is happening. And I've talked to people, I've talked to the city, I've talked to towns, I've talked to county people, and I get blank stick. I get nothing. And my question is, what are you guys gonna do to change our area? Our area is a great place. Our area is the hub of the Northeast. There is no reason why our small county should be in the position it's in. And we're asking all you folks, what are you going to do different that's been going on for the last 20 years? It's time to change. It's time to stop blaming the 1972 flood. It had nothing to do with it. Okay? I hear it all the time. 1972. 1972 is in the past. What are you guys going to do? If you're in office, what are you going to do? That's our question. Um, thank you for that question. I think mean, it really gets to the heart of this. I'm going to answer it in two ways. One thing we need to do is take a wholesale look at the way we are running our government. You know, you mentioned the flood of 72. So I have spent a tremendous amount of time over the past year studying the, the form of government that we had and, and reading in the Sargon's at archives and, and things like that. And what I found is, yeah, we had the flood of 72. But something we often forget is that we changed the entire form of our government in 1973. So we went from a board of supervisors that had 25 people, including 10 representatives in the city, to a charter and a legislator, legislature and a 15 member legislature and a county executive. So I would say, question number one, whether it's myself or Neil or, or whoever it is on the legislature, ask that question. Do we have the best form of government? We're one of only 18 counties in New York State that has a county executive. We have the lowest number of, of, of 
constituent to legislator numbers in the state? Those are the big questions we need to be asking. Number two is this idea of cooperation. I mean, it's one thing to say we have unprecedented cooperation among, among uh, government, but it's another to have it. There used to be an entity called the Council of Governments, and that entity included representatives from all levels of government, from municipalities and the school board and the water board, the sewer district, the city, the county. We need to bring that back so that when we have these issues, instead of everybody working on it from one angle, we can sit down in a room together, you know, get our elbows dirty, and, and really start to address these issues. Thank you. Those are 